A very good afternoon. I'm Sthiti, and I'll be presenting on the role of regulatory uh, um, on the role of regulatory authorities in managing the irrigation energy nexus, specifically the impact of state electricity regulatory commissions in the state of Punjab, Haryana, uh, in the state of Punjab, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh. Before I go further, I would also like to tell you that my computer needs a virus scan, so some slides will be missing. But on the upside, at least I'll finish in time. Um, basically, the electricity, the subsidy given to agriculture for electricity has been rising. It's now, uh, I mean, these are of course estimates, but the last figure is, says it's rupees twenty thousand crores. The basis for how the subsidy is calculated is this indirect, indirect. Method and this is where the role of state reg electricity regulatory commissions come in. Now, what we have are utilities for filing the ARRs. ARRs are aggregate revenue requirements. These, on the basis of these, which they file with the state electricity regulatory commissions, the utility will decide how much tariff they're going to charge from different categories of consumers. The state government then decides whether or not they want to subsidize agricultural consumption. Now, most state governments subsidize it, except the, except West Bengal. The third stage is where the utility claims this. Uh, the third stage is where the state electricity regulatory commission will examine whether or not it chooses to accept these values that have been filed. Now, this it does on the basis of evaluating whether these claims have been calculated in a transparent and logical manner. Again, the state-wise dif differences arise because some SCRCs like Karnataka will accept the value claim but some like Punjab tend to uh, push for change and they tend to give an, uh, they push for change and then they also raise questions and issues about how the utility is calculating values. The state governments then re release the subsidies as approved by the state electricity regulatory commissions. Again, this is done in, on a, either on a monthly basis or on a manner which has already been pre-decided. States like Tamil Nadu do so with a great lag, but states like Punjab are quite prompt in releasing the subsidy payments. Why is there a problem with the current system? Right now, there is an absence of metering. Almost apart from the states of West Bengal and Uttarakhand, agricultural consumption almost everywhere is unmetered. So this generates a huge, huge uncertainty about how much cons consumption of electricity is being done by the agricultural sector. You have the claims of utilities who say that, you know, we're not being paid <coughs> enough when we're giving them so much, so much of, you know, so much of our money is going in providing to the agricultural sector, whereas you have also have counterclaims, and this is actually the predominant view that the utilities are showing agricultural consumption is higher so as to mask their transmission and distribution losses and so as to claim more subsidy from the state government. This presentation looks at the role of state electricity regulatory commissions through a study of the ARRs that have been filed by the utility to these commissions over the years from the time when the State Electricity Regulatory Commission was first constituted till the latest available filing. I do this for, uh, this has been done for the three states, Punjab, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh. In the case of Punjab, as you can see, now the first bar in blue represents the claims that have been made by the utility. So before the reforms, before the unbundling, that's the Punjab State Electricity Board. And after we had the State Electricity Regulatory Commission, you have two sets of bars. You have a blue bar and a red bar. The blue bar is where you have uh, the, uh, the claims which have been made by the uh, utility. And the red bar are the claims that have been finally approved by the State Electricity Regulatory Commission. So in the beginning, so towards 2002, 2003, you see that the two bars are almost you know, level, which means the claims that have been made by the utilities are sort of being approved by the Electricity Regulatory Commission. But as the years progress, the Electricity Regulatory Commission is being quite proactive in terms of not blindly accepting the claims made by the utility. If you have to, um, if you have to uh, sort of um, categorize the methodology being followed in the calculation of electricity uh, in the uh, agricultural electricity consumption. What we had till 2000 was the residual method, wherein agricultural consumption was basically just a, was calculated as a remnant from whatever energy input there was. From that you subtract the metered, con, uh, metered consumption, from that you subtract the transmission and distribution losses, and the residual was what was taken to be uh, agricultural consumption. Energy input included generation as well as purchases made. 
from 2001 onwards, and in 2000 was when the Punjab State Electricity Regulatory Commission was formed. They started a system of which was uh, they started a system of estimation which was based on a small sample of meter tubers. Now this sample was of course very very minuscule. It constituted only about 0.38 percent of all the tube wells in of all irrigated irrigation pump sets in Punjab. So Pan the Punjab State Electricity Regulatory Commission didn't just accept those claims made by the utility. It looked at normative estimates from other states. It looked at normative estimates from a World Bank study for Haryana. It looked at it also constituted instituted some other studies <coughs> uh, the Punjab Agricultural University study and uh, other entities and it was and and it, it rejected quite a few of the claims between this phase in this period from 2001 to 2007 the uh, the electricity regulatory commission kept stressing on the fact that the utility needed to increase its sampling size if that was the uh, if if extrapolation from a, small, uh, from a sample was going to be the basis for calculation of agricultural electricity, then that sample needed to be more representative. So, in fact, from 2006 onwards, that's what happened. Phase 3, 2006 marks the beginning of a new uh, methodology in calculation of agricultural consumption in the state of Punjab. From they started with by metering 5.98% of the total tube wells. This uh, by 2010, had increased to 10%. And further, the sample was taken in representative agroeconomic zones as per the recommendations of the Punjab Agricultural University. Along with this, there was also third party verification of these claims made. So the, uh, so the Electricity Regulatory Commission either under, uh, rechecked these estimates through its own staff or through third party estimates. Basically, it played, it played a very proactive role. The next state is the state of Karnataka. Now, the state of Karnataka, if you see, this is a very, this, these are the claims made by the blue is uh, in blue are the claims made by the utility, and in red are the electricity regulatory commission approved uh, values. And as you can see, even though it's only for a very short period from 2000 to 2004 or 5, except for this one brief period in 2002 or 3, either the claims are accepted or there's a very less margin of difference in what KERC accepts. Why, why is there a positive margin on the last one? <laughs> in 2004 or 5. Yeah. That's actually hard to fathom. So because if you because if you look at the if you look at the claims that are made, uh, what we have in uh, in the case of Karnataka is that in 2005, so between 2004 2005, they had a change in terms. I I'll just come to that. So maybe once I explain the methodology, you'll be able to answer your question better. Um, in, uh, until 1999, there was a residual method followed, which, as I explained in the case of Punjab, there were huge data discrepancies. Since 2000, the estimation was based on a sample metering of uh, distrib uh, of distribution <laughs> transformers, which was multiplied multiplied by the number of irrigation pump sets. But then again, there was no information on the representativeness of the distribution transformers, whether these were mixed load distribution transformers, and if yes, they were mixed load distribution transformers, what was the extent of the non-irrigation uh, power load? And even, there were also questions raised about the meters that were post put because in a lot of cases, they were found to be either malfunctioning or not functioning properly. So, in the beginning, despite reservations about the claims that the desk bombs had filed, the, uh, the a regulatory commission would keep approving these claims. I mean, it would put on paper that we think that there's something wrong with the figure, but it would go on to accept the claims. In 2005, there was a slight change in terms of the meters that were the distribution transformers that that were earlier had that had earlier been taken for a representative sample uh, were mixed load transformers, but with a majority feeding with a majority feeding irrigation. The, in the, uh, feeding power in the irrigation sector. But in 2005, uh, um, in the, there was a slight shift in terms of the meters that were sh uh, uh, um, that were feeding to the, uh, it, I mean, the percentage of meters that were feeding to the irrigation sector had increased and they were, for a fact, predominantly, um, even despite being mixed load, they were predominantly uh, 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 Providing electricity to uh, electricity for agriculture. Even here, the regulatory commission found anomalies. Anomalies in the reading. The methodology which is followed right now is still the same. 
and even the pilot DTCs are constitute a very very small sample, 0.5 percent. The method of calculation for non-irrigation load is very highly unclear. Okay, <laughs> is highly unclear. Line estimate, the line loss estimates also vary. So uh, Terry says it's six percent, and I a study can constituted by uh, the Indian Institute of Science says it's ten percent. They, it doesn't account for the difference in electricity consumption between dug wells and bore wells because dug wells with centrifugal pumps use less energy than submersible uh, than submersible bore wells. The number of uh, irrigate and uh, if you remember the previous slide, what you uh, the sample the sample of meters was multiplied by the number of irrigation pump sets. But on the right hand side, the number of irrigation pump sets is also highly in doubt because. Um, as Aditi mentioned earlier, the numbers which the state electric, uh, which the utilities have, and the numbers which the agricultural census have, have a huge, huge divergence. In the case of uh, Andhra Pradesh, there's uh, Andhra Pradesh would be the, uh, state with a mixed record. The blue represents the claims of the licensee, and the red represents the approval which has been granted, and if you have to categorize phases in changes in methodology, there would be two phases, before 2004 and after 2004, and simply for the reason because before 2004, there was a variation in methods used. I mean, it was quite, and after 2004, the same uniform method was used. You can't say whether that method, I mean, was good or bad, but it, there was uniformity, and that's the only reason for this categorization in the methodology. Before 2004, um, in 1996-97, there was a sampling methodology, but the sample comprised of 10 tube wells taken from every mandal. And then the, <coughs> but then because they realized this wasn't representative enough, so these were the In 2000, 2001 and two, it was on the basis of supply, value, uh, average horsepower, and the number of pump sets, and so forth. After 2004, there's been one consistent methodology, and which is basically that. Uh, specific consumption per house power, power is it's, it's calculated on the base, uh, from the low voltage side of agricultural distribution transformers, and this is multiplied by the number of pump sets. The number of pump sets was tabulated as per a census which was carried out in the early 2000s on the orders of the regulatory commission. In 2006, there was a process for third party verification which was begun by involving ISI. However, there is still concern over the validity of the uh, of the DT distribution transformer meter readings and in case of the unmetered agricultural con consumption uh, there is still no robust measurement mechanism. From 2007 onwards we see that APRC starts to be more authoritative in its uh, in its orders because it starts to pull up individual discounts. In fact in, in one particular order it actually asks one of the discounts that where are you pulling up these dreamlike figures from when we need an answer and we need an explanation. And the last order is quite hopeful because they speak of finding new methodologies to assess agricultural consumption. Uh, this is just a slide which shows the subsidy for agriculture approved, which was finally approved on the basis of these claims which were approved by the State Electricity Regulatory Commission. And uh, in the state of Punjab, you can see that there's a sort of calibration. It's not just a increase, deep increase. In the case of Karnataka, between 2009, 2010, and 11, there's a steep increase, and there's no accounting for as to why there's a sudden escalation. For Andhra Pradesh, there would appear to be a steep increase, but that's misleading only because 2007-8 and 2008-9, these are the two graphs over here, they only have uh, they only account for the uh, subsidy which was claimed by two of the discounts. In all, there are four. So in 2000. Seven, eight, only two discounts by claims, and in 2008-9, only three of the four discounts by claims. This again is also representative of the fact that they aren't being seated. I mean, the discounts on their part are lagging in terms of the mandate which has been set out for them to do. In conclusion, uh, while we realize that the impact of SCRCs is important, and this is perfect, uh, this is borne out through the example of the Punjab State Electricity Regulatory Commission, which has taken a very proactive approach and. But that itself is, may not be a standalone because the discounts need to engage as well. In the case of Andhra Pradesh, and the case of Andhra Pradesh brings, puts that point across. The question then to ponder over is why is Punjab proactive? Why is one particular state proactive and not others? 
and not and why aren't the others? And is it a case of regulatory capture as Aditi mentioned and as it was being put forth in the Shungu Committee report? Or as we saw in the previous presentation, are there ways that on the side of the discoms we can use organizational or managerial techniques so as to incentivize them further to carry out the mandate they're supposed to and so as to fulfill the uh, orders and to fulfill the no, uh, and so as to fulfill what the State Electricity Regulatory Commission has asked them to do. So there are two sides to the picture. First, of course, the State Electricity Regulatory Commission, it has to be proactive. And secondly, the DISCOMs also need to actively engage and take a proactive approach. And if I think both the two sides work together in tandem, it would be a brighter future of this. <laughs> Thank you.